Uh, the question is, you know, I am a partner in a title company. The question is, what is the impact of the foreclosure crisis going to be to a title company? What is the impact that potential fraud can have on issuing title? If you look at the homeowner ABC who was delinquent on their loan, the house was foreclosed, it became an REO of the bank, and the bank sold it. You have Mr. and Mrs. Jones who now live in the house for two years, but the first homeowners are claiming that the foreclosure was not done correctly. So now what happens to homeowner Mr. and Mrs. Jones in the event that that house is now turned back to the original homeowners? That's the risk to a title company. And that's why today, in many cases, and in this, in the book, are two examples of titles that we did not issue where there are questions of standing. Did that bank have standing to foreclose? One of the biggest, actually before the, the January 27th meeting, one of the biggest issues was the Ibanez case in Massachusetts where it was found that U.S. Bank did not have standing to foreclose and a foreclosure was reversed. And that was considered the shot across the bow of the, of the entire foreclosure business. And since that time, what we found is different courts are coming up with different rulings. There was a New York State case, uh, Farrell L. Lagarde, Lagar, where it was found that the bank did not have the right to foreclose. It was a bankruptcy case. It was too late. The, the foreclosure was ruled invalid, but it was too late. But different courts are ruling different ways. Different states are ruling different ways. It's different in judicial states versus non-judicial judicial states. And it's a, I would have to say it's a moving target. It's a, it's a very complex issue and one that is going to take a little while to play out. I mean, this is not something that's going to be resolved anytime soon. The National Association of Land Title Examiners and Ab Abstractors issued a commentary on MERS on February 10th. They said, why was a land record system that lasted for 400 years, why did it have to be replaced by MERS? And the issue is, one is, it saved a lot of money in recording fees. And that's another issue Another tentacle of this issue is that now different municipalities are starting to sue in order to reclaim all of the recording fees that were not collected because of MERS. So the question of why was a system that was good for 400 years no longer good? Well, securitizations is one big reason. Wall Street was making a ton of money moving mortgages, moving them, moving them. And that system fulfilled the needs, you know, where you could just have somebody sitting in a computer move a mortgage from this owner to this owner. But it didn't fulfill the, the typical legal requirements of creating a chain of title. So they said, the effect of uncertainty created in part by the failure to properly transfer the note and security interest to the intended beneficiaries of the debt has the potential to be devastating. They ask the following questions. What will the courts decide with regard to property previously foreclosed in the name of MERS? How will the courts regard the validity of liens currently registered with MERS as they go into future default? How will the bankruptcy judges regard the enforceability of mortgages that are not currently in default? So there are a myriad of questions, and there aren't that many answers. And each court that decides a case is establishing their own, their own precedents, I guess you would say, because it's different. Different judges have decided different ways. So for this to finally be resolved in some concrete way with some concrete system seems to be a long way off because there's just a ton of moving parts. Now to go to the actual presentation, and I will keep it relatively brief. Actually, I had a couple of handouts here. 
Everyone loves handouts. Mm -hmm.